This is a tissue section of an inactive mammary gland. And we can see that it's characterized by a vast network of dense irregular connective tissue. And within it, we can see patches of adipocytes or adipose tissue. And also we can see these clusters of cells. And these clusters of cells are important because these are what, what are called lobules. And within each one of these lobules, we're actually gonna find a series of ducts. And in, a, in an active mammary gland, we'd see a set of ducts as well as glandular tissue or acini. But since this is an inactive mammary gland, we we'll actually only see just the ducts. So these, this is an example of a terminal duct that I'm outlining. It's sort of circular because it's been in cut and cross section. And normally it would have a layer of low cuboidal cells that would surround it and a lumen. But due to the fact that this gland is inactive and likely also due to processing, we actually don't see the lumen of this duct. So this, since this, this duct is inside this large lobule, it, they call it an intralobular duct. And we can compare this to the duct that's found outside the lobule, and it's known as the interlobular duct. And it has a, a more of a distinct appearance. And if we go over here in this section, we can see this group of cells. These are interlobular ducts. And we can see they have a stratified uh, epithelium made up of cuboidal cells, and we have a, l a larger lumen. So th the, the ducts, as they move from the lobule out towards the nipple, the size of the lumen and the ducts actually increase. So those are the two main ducts that we're concerned with. We have an interlobular duct, and then we have intralobular duct that are found within inside the lobules. So when an individual becomes pregnant, the mammary gland and the tissue is going to abruptly change. We're going to have an increase in the duct system as well as development of alveoli and glandular tissue. So we'll see that in the next slide. In this tissue section, we're looking at a mammary gland that's into six months of pregnancy. And what we can see is we no longer have a predominance of dense irregular connective tissue. We actually have a predominance of alveoli and our duct system. So if we look in the section above, we can see a square that has um, a nice layer of simple cuboidal epithelium. And there's a, a lumen. This is actually our intralobular duct. And adjacent to it, we can see all these white spaces that are lined with cells. These are our alveoli, and we can see that they have a secretory product that's ac accumulating in their lumens. And this secretory product is called colostrum, and it contains a high amount of proteins, carbohydrates, as well as uh, antibodies. And we can see some of the cells that are surrounding the alveoli have these white almost vacuolated spaces, and they're, uh, they actually have fatty droplets. So even though that the colostrum has a high um, component of proteins and carbohydrates, it's going to have some lipid component, and we can actually see that in the cells that are surrounding it. And finally, we see one cell here. This is important because it's called the plasma cell, and it's responsible for secreting antibodies. So this uh, cell is going to secrete antibodies into this colostrum, and this is going to be important for the immunity of the newborn baby. So the colostrum is actually only a secretory product that is secreted approximately three days after the newborn baby is born. And after that time, the secretory product of the mammary gland will change and it will become more of a lactating gland and produce breast milk. So we'll see that on the next slide. We're looking at a lactating mammary gland. And we can see that the alveoli that makes up this mammary gland is now really dilated. We can see the walls that are between the, the various alveoli. And in addition, we can see in some of them, they have a buildup of breast milk, which is the secretion that we found within these alveoli. And the breast milk is composed of milk lipids and milk proteins. And the milk proteins are released by cells that are surrounding the alveoli through a process known as marocrine secretion, where the milk proteins are released directly 
into the lumen with no loss of cytoplasm. But there's some cells that make up the, uh, that's actually secrete the milk lipids are going to operate through a, a apocrine secretion in which they actually do lose a portion of the cytoplasm along with the secretory product. So we can see, actually see that in a portion of the section if we kind of look around. Here's an example here at the arrow. If we zoom in, we can see sort of these little blobs of the secretory products coming off. And there, so in this section, in this little blob, we're going to have a portion of cytoplasm that's surrounding the milk lipids. So this is called apocrine secretion, and this is how we know apocrine secretion is happening inside the cell because we can actually see these apical protrusions coming off of the uh, cuboidal cells that are lining the alveoli. So these are going to contribute the milk lipids uh, component of the breast milk. So in general, the features of the lactating mammary glands, we're going to see these large dilated alveoli, as well as we're going to see the apocrine secretion coming off of the, the cells that are lining the alveoli. And inside these alveoli, we may find breast milk.